Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Comic Kid here again, and today we have another Run V Run video for you guys. Now it has been a while since I've done one of these, but someone had suggested not too long ago a uh, Simone versus Stuart Fletcher and Tar on their respective back roll runs, and I thought it was a great idea, and it finally gave me an excuse to finish the uh, Stuart Fletcher and Tar run. I had only had like one volume left or something like that. And so I'm finally caught up with everything in the new 52 for Batgirl. I have read beyond that point uh, as well, but I just never quite finished the new 52 run. Now, before we get started, be sure to hit like and subscribe as always, but I also wanted to uh, give a shout out to my friends over at Next Issue Podcast. If you guys like hearing other people's thoughts on like nerdy movies, TV, comics, they keep up with a lot of it. <laughs> and so, yeah, they are great guys. I know they're available on uh, platforms such as YouTube, uh, Apple, and Spotify as well. So if you're looking to just support another nerd channel or just listen to some awesome guys chat about nerd stuff, then I'd definitely recommend giving them a shot. But we'll go ahead and jump right in. As always, we're going to start with Gail Simone's run just because it came first. Now, Gail Simone first picked up the Batgirl run at the start of the new 52 event for DC. And when it was announced that she was picking up the title, you know, a lot of fans were pretty excited. Uh, Simone had a lot of experience writing Barbara Gordon on her uh, Birds of Prey run before the new 52. And so fans kind of knew what to expect with Simone's approach to Barbara. Not in terms of plot, but they at least knew she was going to do the character justice. That said, the New 52 interpretation of the character did meet some criticisms just because while on one hand it was great to see Barbara overcome her injury, others kind of felt that she was equally as badass as Oracle. And so well, some people did criticize DC for some like lack of reputation in that matter, but that doesn't all fall on Simone. That is a major editorial choice as well. And despite whatever problems may have gone there, Simone still delivered a phenomenal interpretation of Barbara Gordon as a character. At the time that the run starts, Barbara hasn't been back as Batgirl for too terribly long. Uh, her friends and family are still, you know, telling her, hey, take it easy here and there. Uh, your legs aren't fully up to where they likely could be and stuff like that. So readers really aren't missing any like recovery story there. Now, with that in mind, Simone also did a lot to both incorporate Barbara as a member of the Bat family and distance her from it as well. Uh, throughout the run, you know, you do see other members of the family like Nightwing and Batman, of course. And there are certainly elements of the story that feel forced, which we'll get to in a minute, but you really don't see other members of the Bat family too often. Simone also dives pretty heavily into uh, Barbara's relationship with her father, and especially so as uh, James Gordon Jr. kind of plays a factor, especially throughout book three. Now, in distancing Barbara from other members of the Bat family, Simone did a lot to give her her own villains. Uh, you really don't see Batgirl fighting any of Batman's villains except for maybe like once or twice. And so, like particularly with uh, Nightfall for example, Simone really succeeds at establishing Batgirl as her own hero. Even in other books like Nightwing or Red Hood or something, there is the common tendency to throw a Batman villain into the mix. And unless you count James Gordon Jr. and, you know, obviously like Joker in the Court of Owls, then Barbara doesn't really face off against too many of Batman's villains throughout Simone's run. Now, to start off with some of the weakest elements of Simone's Batgirl run, at least in my opinion, the series definitely feels kind of weighed down by events going on in Batman. 
Uh, the story kind of almost regularly felt interrupted by things like Court of Owls, Death of the Family, Zero Year, whatever, whatever it may have been. Because Batman is such a big driving element in DC and the New 52 really tried to focus on continuity, there were definitely times where they would totally just interrupt whatever was going on in whatever Bat Family title and focus on what Batman was doing. Now, fortunately, Simone passes this off as well as she can. Uh, while it does feel a little forced, she still does a great job of transitioning in and out of the respective arcs. And with the Court of Owls, or Night of the Owls in particular, you know, we have recurring characters. We have people that we see again, especially in like the Birds of Prey as well, and so... While Simone herself has expressed issues with editorial during the time of the New 52, she definitely deserves praise for passing it off pretty seamlessly. Now really the only other thing that I guess Simone could have improved on in my opinion is developing the villains further. While I think she did a phenomenal job of introducing a rogues gallery specific to Barbara Gordon, I do feel like once Simone left, those villains just kind of became a little irrelevant. And you know, that happens sometimes with a lot of characters, but I really feel like Simone had a solid foundation with almost all of her villains throughout this arc, but I would have loved to have seen more of them later down the line as well. Like, if Simone had continued, I feel like she really would have had the chance to flesh out these villains more and maybe even make them into some more iconic ones. But because of the drastic tonal shift, uh, between her run and the Stuart, Fletcher, and Tar one, it's easy to see why the next creative team didn't use some of her characters. And that leads into our other point, which is Simone's run is significantly darker than at least the run that followed it, and that's that's for sure. Now, some people have their own issues with like darkness in comics. I personally like how dark Gail Simone's run was in regards to Batgirl. It never felt overly dark in my opinion, but it did kind of match everything else within the Bat family. And especially since we know that DC wanted a darker tone for the Bat family, especially throughout the New 52, then yeah, it definitely makes sense. I do feel like it, it again, helps her kind of fit in with the rest of the members. And I think Gail Simone can write a perfectly fine, darker story. I think most people can agree with me when I say Gail Simone is one of the best writers out there in comics, and so no matter what the tone is, really, Gail Simone is likely gonna be able to make it into a gold mine. But as far as the strengths of her run go, Simone does a lot to reinforce the fact that Barbara Gordon is one of the smartest characters in the DC Universe. You really see a sort of detective element to Barbara come out in this run, and so seeing her kind of echo her father as well as Batman, I thought created a pretty interesting dynamic for Barbara Gordon. And then obviously, as I mentioned before, you have some really interesting new villains. I just wish they had stuck around more. Uh, Mirror and Nightfall in particular, I thought would have been great if they had just had a little bit more like of a fleshed out backstory. The story all throughout is just so excellent. And while I do generally love almost everything with Gail Simone's name on it, I really feel like her Batgirl is one of her best works. Now, before we get into the uh, next run, uh, I do want to talk about the art for Gail Simone's run. Uh, she did work with Artie and Sia for like the first two or three or so. He did do some on and off like artwork and they had like backup artists kind of throughout. Uh, I believe Eddie Barrows filled in after he stepped away. And minus the issues surrounding Artie and CF with uh, X-Men Gold, for those of you who don't know, uh, the artwork throughout Gail Simone's run is generally pretty consistent, and I would say it's some of the strongest art uh, in any of the New 52 run. And even once CF leaves, I mean, Eddie Barrows is just a great artist in general, so if anything, they trade it up, in my opinion. And then, like I said, there are a few other guest artists here and there for, like, annuals and whatnot. Not, but uh, generally I did like the art in, throughout the New 52 Batgirl. But that is about everything I have to say about the New 52 run. Now to transition into the like 
DCU version of the character, like Y-O-U. Uh, Cameron Stewart, Brennan Fletcher, and Babs Tarr picked up the title at issue 35, and this all kind of happened around the time when, uh, like, Dick Grayson was no longer Nightwing and he became Grayson, and, like, the Endgame stuff is coming up in Batman, and so Jim Gordon's about to become Batman, and so you had a pretty dramatic shift, especially in regards to the DC Trinity around this time. But, I mean, the most notable and dramatic change that Stuart Fletcher and Tar brought to Barbara Gordon was a massive tonal shift. And before we get too far into this, I do want to clarify that this is in no way an endorsement of Cameron Stewart's work. It is literally just my observation of the run. And if you choose to support it or not, that is entirely up to you, the viewer. But this is the run that also brought in her kind of now iconic uh, purple Batgirl suit. Uh, there's no denying that Babs Tarr is just a phenomenal artist, and while I myself prefer the new 52 like black and gold, I thought that looked great, I definitely see the appeal to the like purple and gold and g generally what is referred to as the Babs Tarr design for Batgirl. It is a really sleek looking suit, I just prefer the more like armored, plated, type look myself. But with a new suit and a new tone, this version of Batgirl definitely brought kind of an all new audience on board. And I wouldn't say it's geared towards a younger audience by any means, but it is a different demographic. That said, while some people enjoyed the darker tone throughout Gail Simone's run, it is kind of nice to see Barbara Gordon finally start to let loose and kind of have a bit of fun off to the side as well. Now, Stuart, Fletcher, and Tar do build off of what Simone did, but really the only connecting thread is through Alicia, who was Barbara Gordon's roommate and is now more so just kind of like a reoccurring character throughout this run. And then you do have her relationship with Black Canary, which has its ups and downs throughout Fletcher and Tar's run especially, and so there, there are some connecting threads, but for the most part it's pretty much a fresh starting point. Now, I feel like my biggest complaint with this run overall is it kept feeling like it was building towards something and never quite got around to it. And if I had to guess, and this is totally just me speculating, they had the idea for the Motor Crush plot. This team went on to develop the Motor Crush series over at Image, which is also really good if y'all get a chance. And I got the impression that that was going to be their next arc, but they liked the idea so much and didn't want DC to be the sole, like, profiteer or whatever off of it, and so they went to go do that on the independent side. Again, I have no factual evidence to support that, but reading their Batgirl and Motor Crush, I do feel as though other people could see where I'm coming from in regards to that. Now, Simone's run also went on for five volumes, and the Fletcher and Tar stuff went on for only three volumes worth, and so it is a bit shorter had they had the time to actually, like, get their quotey fingers, then it would have probably been much more solid. Uh, like with Simone, uh, this team did develop a few of their own unique villains, I personally didn't think they were as strong or as memorable, but, I mean, what you gonna do? Uh, that said, where this team really succeeded and, I guess, shined is in uh, their approach to the brains of Barbara Gordon. Though Simone herself did highlight just how smart Barbara Gordon is, this team really kind of took it to another, like, equal type level. Uh, Simone focused more on the detective element to Barbara's brain, while Fletcher and Tar focus a lot more on like the techie side. And so you see Barbara kind of work with others to develop her own gadgets and all around she just kind of does a lot more with technology. Effectively you see a bit more of the oracle element of Barbara Gordon in the Fletcher and Tar stuff. Now furthermore, uh, Fletcher and Tar also did a great job of pulling Batgirl further from the Bat family. 
while I agree that Simone had a pretty good balance of keeping Barbara independent and incorporating other members of the family, uh, really the most recurring DC character throughout this run is uh, Black Canary. And again, there are still plenty of mentions of the other characters, and it's not like you don't see any of them, but there are significantly fewer appearances than there were in Simone's run. And furthermore, also unlike the New 52, uh, Babs Tar did like almost all of the artwork in this series. There are only like a, a handful of issues that Tar didn't do. And so all around the artwork is just very consistent and especially if you like Babs Tar, then you good news is you have almost the whole run of just Babstar art. Unfortunately, the same can be said if you don't like Babstar and you're just kind of stuck with her throughout this series. Now, as far as how the artwork relates to the overall story, I definitely feel like Babstar fit this tone perfectly, while the other artists in Gail Simone's run also fit hers very well, and so I don't really have a preference on art, but both suit their sto respective stories incredibly well in my opinion. Now overall, between the two, I do gotta say that I feel like I prefer Gail Simone's run. Uh, it's not that I dislike the Stuart Fletcher tar stuff by any means, and obviously Simone had the added advantage of length. But overall, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm a sucker for Gail Simone's work, but all around I thought Simone's back roll was just significantly stronger all around. And furthermore, I would have loved to see a completely unhinged version of Gail Simone's run where she didn't have to factor in everything that was going on with Batman as well. But overall, both are really solid, just in their own ways. And because of their significant differences, it's pretty clear that readers are going to prefer one over the other, but I could totally see why someone would prefer the Stuart Fletcher and Tar stuff as well. But that is everything that I have for you guys today. Be sure to let me know what you think of each run down in the comments section below. As always, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again real soon.